Well, some people ask me for my settings, so here they are. As I am a man of the people, I must oblige. So first of all, I'm going to be talking about what the settings actually do. So I'm just going to go over all of them and then we're going to go and check out why I actually use them. So first of all, we have controls. The looking version for me is standard. Some people use inverted. I've never played with someone who uses inverted. If you use inverted, it doesn't change any of your gauntlet challenges in zombies. So even that is pretty useless. So I've never had any reason to use inverted. And inverted only works on your, I think, horizontal view pitch. Uh, no, sorry, your vertical view pitch. So it doesn't actually change your horizontal. The look sensitivity horizontal is all max. I mean, max, 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 max. The reason these are maxed is these two are mainly to turn on people to do a couple of really good movements. Um, skating on this is much easier, and just sliding in general, pulling slides in different directions is much easier on a higher sensitivity. So I use max. Turning on people on max is the easiest way of doing it. As long as you have good accuracy, it's fine, and I use control freaks anyway, so it's very easy. The control freaks are the max height that you, I can literally have on both sticks. Uh, then you have the 4-4, very difficult to aim for some people on this, but for me it's fine. Uh, this allows you to swipe quite well and basically get from one enemy to the other in the slowest amount of time possible. So that's that. Target assist is actually for multiplayer and blackout, so if you turn this off you don't get aim assist, so of course you want to have this on. Aim assist only works on zombies, if you want you can actually turn this off and it won't impact your blackout gameplay. I have it on because I still play zombies sometimes. Control vibration is of course off. Turning it on, the problem with that is it is very very difficult to keep your hand steady and it messes with my flexibility and my muscle memory over all of the, well, you know, how I'm supposed to uh, swipe to people and even what buttons to press because I'm just having this big dildo shaking in my hand, like what? So I would recommend never turning vibration on on this game. If you're playing zombies, I wouldn't mind doing this because in that case it doesn't really matter. But here, where every little minuscule millisecond counts, I would not recommend that. Sprint cancel is real, is something some people use, personally I don't. The reason being is it doesn't allow you to, well, run away and have your gun reloaded. It basically splits up the two actions, so it doesn't allow as much fluidity. And since I have a back button anyway, I can YY instead of cancelling my reload or sprint. So for me it doesn't make a difference, I've actually never even played Black Ops 4 with sprint cancels reload. And I probably should because I used to use this a lot back in Modern Warfare 3 and World War 2. Automantle is off. This shit, I have never actually experienced a problem with this at all, ever in my entire life. But from what, I, what I've heard, it means that sometimes if you're running into objects, you can just be forced to mantle them. And that is really, really, really bad. Because mantling, you can't aim while doing that, you're gonna get completely screwed over. Uh, you just can be climbing random objects around the map. But I've never actually had that happen to me. And I've never played with it on, so I don't know, but I keep it off, it doesn't change anything I do. Auto sprint I keep off. It is good to have this on, because you can run and drop items, or run and do your inventory, or run and do anything you want, even change your settings here. The problem with having auto run on is a lot of the time I double click my sprint. Uh, that's just how I play. Um, and sometimes I do it too fast, sometimes whatever, and I could relearn it, but I cannot be asked to do that. Uh, so I, what it happens is if you double click your sprint, you cannot go to a walking stance very easily in a, when you're auto sprinting, so it's a complete disaster if you want to have fluid movement. It basically means you either have to learn to never double click your sprint button, which is very, very rare, I mean, I've never seen someone learn it like that, or you just don't use it, and I don't use it. The stick layout, these I have never used, and they will not help you in the gauntlets, from what I know, in zombies. So rest in peace to that. Uh, basically, use, I've never seen anyone use anything different than default yet. The button layout tactical I used to use. Stick and move back in Black Ops 3, um, but then went into tactical after World War 2. And if I were to say what else is decent, Bumper Jumps Tactical is pretty decent as well for people who don't have paddles. Because I have paddles, uh, well not paddles, back buttons, I use Tactical. 
and R1 L1 flipped, I used to use R2 L2. This really makes no difference, but with the button back buttons I have, it is more comfortable to use the flipped because my hand is not as stretched. And any other reason, you technically can shoot um, or aim faster and shoot faster with flipped as well. Depending if you have trigger uh, trigger fingers and <laughs> trigger stops on your R1 L1. Sorry, R2 L2. That's basically it for the actual controls. Graphic settings, having it on 30 is actually the worst and not recommended by pros. What most pros will do is they'll just put it all the way up. I used to do that, but the game looks ugly as shit. The amount that you want, theoretically, is about 50 default. If you put it to 30, there are some places in the map where you will literally just see, like, there will be no shading and it will be like black and slightly less black. And in that case, you're going to get destroyed. That can happen in the showers on Alcatraz, especially in that little room by those washing machines. If you have really low brightness, like I do, I cannot see shit in there. So I try to avoid. Like I just play it slightly differently. So if I had a higher brightness, I'd be more confident there. But I just don't give a shit because when you have high brightness, your game looks shit. If you have zero, I used to play zero. But when you play zero, what happens is. There are actually so many places that literally just have a black tent over it. I actually went into a game of Voyager Spare one time, I looked outside the map, and it was just black. Like, the, the, the zombie spawn was just black as shit, I couldn't see anything, and I was like, wait, is there really nothing there? I put it back up to 100, there's like a full detailed little room there. I was like, wow, I'm missing out on a lot. That's my brightness. The colorblind filter is uh, makes no difference, I'm not colorblind so I use off. Some people like to use them even though they're not colorblind, which from my experience I would not recommend. I think messing with the idea, especially if you played colorblind mode off and you try and change these, I would not recommend that because it can sort of screw up your brain seeing different colors for the d different shit in the kill feed. Like enemies, for example, in one of them are like, per oh, sorry, friendlies are like purple in most of them actually. So it's like, yeah, I would not recommend doing this. If you're colorblind, though, of course, go ahead. That doesn't really make a difference in the game. Play name indicator. The only reason I've ever used icon only or abbreviated was in the, uh, there's a game mode, custom game mode called Trouble in Terrorist Town. That's the only time I've ever used these and you want to have a full name. And there is so much you can do with knowing the enemy's name, especially in multiplayer, that can give you an advantage, especially in round-based modes. If you see that name again, you will know what gun he was using before, what specialist, what his sort of playstyle is, how good he is, what is his accuracy. If you don't have that, it's a bit trickier. You would have to guess it by specialists. Split-screen orientation, Horizontal makes it go there's one up and one down. Vertical makes it when there's one on the left, one on the right. I've never used split screen in my life, and horizontal is, in my opinion, better. Vertical gives you like a really shit field of view. Horizontal gives you a pretty nice field of view. The safe area I have is just the perfect one. All the arrows are matching. Audio here. Um, I use Super Crunch. People say it's good. I have found no evidence to back that shit up. Some people recommended high boost, uh, or sort of base boost. Um, in my opinion, use any of these. I don't think it would make a difference. Apparently Super Crunch is the best, so I just use it and I just see no difference anyway. Subtitles should be on, but if you have to go into theater, and if you're taking like images from theater and doing clips in theater, make sure subtitles are off because there's a glitch where subtitles will like stay on your screen and you can't take proper screenshots. The voice volume itself is like the character, so you want this to be up. Music volume I have up, and this I usually have up, but I was playing with some very loud people. So all of these I have actually at 10, I like to just play it like that. Some people recommend ta taking off multiplayer dialogue, do not do this shit bro, really. You can, uh, some people say, uh, there was a, there's some dumb guy who said, if you turn this off, your character won't speak 
uh, like any lines, like when you're throwing a grenade, your character won't say grenade inbound or some shit like that. That is completely bullshit. He won't say it on your screen, but he will say it on everyone else's screen. So it makes no difference for you. And the worst part is, if the enemies say grenade incoming, you won't hear that shit. And if you turn this on, you can hear, I don't know, battery saying cluster grenade inbound, and you will know where the enemy's location is. Turning it off won't hide your own uh, voice, so make sure you keep that on. Controller sound I have on. If you turn it off, it literally makes no difference. The only time controller sound activates is if you don't have a headset plugged in, and maybe if your TV has no speakers, which mine doesn't, it's a monitor. So it will turn, it will go into controller sound, and like for example, going these. This sound is making right here will go into controller, so it's like uh, some of it will go into the controller. So it's pretty cool, but uh, it makes very little difference. This one's a big one. Uh, round, in my opinion, is much better. Less my brain can see shit easier on the minimap when it's round, because the minimap turns with you. You're not always facing north. The square one always faces north. So in my opinion, round is much better, even though it's smaller. Item pickup, of course, guaranteed has to be pressed. If you don't use press, your the looting is a disaster. The priority item pickup is actually pretty stupid. I've never ever seen a difference between these, and even still, this does not prioritize distance sometimes, which is crazy. The, the this is completely broken in my opinion. The um, the way looting works in the game. So this shit won't really change much, and you probably wouldn't want ammo anyway, you would want to prioritize distance for the gun. Quick equipment is cycle for me, some people use use. The reason I don't use use is because it is just really really difficult to cycle through equipment and meds like that. You have some bad things that can happen with this, and that's the fact that you can't use anything while you're in the quick equip menu. But I just don't give a shit. Like uh, that's that's fine for me. The ladder mounting orientation guaranteed for me. I would recommend backwards. If you do backwards, you can perform what's called like a ladder catch, where you can jump into like a hole where there's a ladder, and quickly right before you hit the ground and die from fall damage, just touch the ladder once, and you will actually go right onto the ladder. And I'll cut off like maybe 10 seconds of you climbing down long ladders. If you have it on forward, it will mean that that is impossible. Even if you try and like go backwards and not go on a ladder, you'll be forced onto that ladder and that is not possible to do. Reload behavior is on press. Uh, the reason I do this, the reason this is even here is because of item priority pickup. So if you have press, theoretically you want on release because it differentiates the item pickup and the reload. Sometimes I've been screwed by this before, uh, but the truth is I still use on press. I think, in all honesty, I don't see much of a difference and I have not been screwed horrendously uh, in some situations. Basically what this does is it means sometimes you can try and reload but it will pick up a gun. That's the idea. And so it's like, you know, not a big deal. Connection meter has to be on. This helps me actually check the servers. So for me, a 20 to uh, 30 is like Amsterdam North, uh, like a 30 sort of server is Amsterdam, uh, oh sorry, uh, Netherlands North, and then Amsterdam in the Netherlands. There is like a like 40, 44 kind of server, which is in Paris. There is a anywhere from about 60 to 80, which is Milano. There is a 50 to 60 server from Frankfurt. There is a 170 in, uh, I think, UAE, right? Yeah, it's in UAE, 170. There is a North American North, uh, Northwest, uh, North, Northeast, which is 90. Right below that is like a 130. To the east, you have 150 Illinois. Uh, you have North American West, which is around 230. You know, there's a lot of servers, and then the servers that I don't connect to can be like 300 Japanese, uh, North Korean sort of shit and then like 400 Sydney. So those are the main ones and there's also like uh, 275 Rio de Janeiro. So this is why I want to have a connection meter so I can tell where the hell I'm getting connected to. Muting I actually keep off just so I can hear all the reactions of people calling me cheaters. And uh, the content 
gravity content like makes very little difference other than the fact that you get more gore, which I just don't give a shit. And I think, <laughs> funny enough, if you have graphic content off, yes, the cutscenes in the game will get blurred in Special HQ and even in Zombies. So that's why I would recommend having graphic content on so you can actually watch the cutscenes properly. Zombies Kyle Toon Mode apparently it makes it so your game doesn't crash as often and people used to use this in the past to get around the blue screens but nowadays I don't even go for high rounds so I keep this on normal user generated content I would advise keeping on it allows you to actually see funniest shit emblems and create emblems of your own and that's my settings there other than that I think that is everything for the settings Now I could show class setups and shit, but uh, there's not really a class setup you can do on Alcatraz and people wouldn't give a shit about what I use on multiplayer. But basically what I use on multiplayer is just a sword. Just abuse the shit out of sword, and that's it. There is technically one last little thing I can show you for settings. I don't see it too much settings. People don't even realize these exist. But if you really want a good settings video, you probably want to include these as well. This is going to free cam, I don't know why I'm so high up in the sky, doesn't matter. Basically, you have these settings. Funny thing is, I don't know what most of these do. I have, number one, game HUD off, so I can take screenshots better, so the HUD is off. The auto-dolly key interval, I have no idea what this shit does. I have no idea what auto-dolly record does either. Funny thing is, I have a feeling these settings might actually be completely useless because BO2 had a record feature and so did BO3 where you could record certain clips and save them into a sort of storage. But that doesn't exist on BO4, so I have a feeling these are actually just completely useless. But the big thing is, I just have show game HUD off just for that bullshit and here, if I'm playing on theater, of course I'm going to turn off sub subtitles so I don't get a stupid glitch. But that's basically it, I think for the whole of my settings. Well, thank you very much for watching. Have a very wonderful time and au revoir. Bye.